Welcome back to the Sports Source, the segment brought to you by Safety Systems, audiovisual systems for your home or office. Uh, they do security systems, obviously, it's right in their name. Security systems, life safety systems. That means fire, that means the, uh, even the uh, nurse call systems, they can do that. Uh, home automation, they're all about that. You want to run your house from a tablet or a phone, boom, call VFL JJ Serlis and the team at Safety Systems. They'll take care of your home, they'll take care of your business. I've said this for many years now. They've been around for more than 20, but when you're walking around East Tennessee, check the sign on the door. You're going to see an orange, white, and black sticker that says Safety Systems because these guys are the best in the area. Safe tsystems.com. All right, let's take a look at Tennessee's remaining schedule. They got six games left. They got uh, Kentucky nine o'clock this Tuesday. Of course, Kentucky took care of the Vols. Tennessee actually one of their hottest shooting games of the year, but Kentucky just lit them up on the day of Joe B. Hall's death, which yeah. I think added to that one. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And then they've got Arkansas on the road this week, Saturday, uh, at Missouri next week, then Auburn, at Georgia, and then Arkansas again. Uh, they are on the verge of an SEC title race. Take a look at this. We said there wasn't a chance earlier. If we can go, there we go. There's only four teams in the race right now, barring a huge collapse. I don't think you're going to get a big collapse. Auburn's remaining schedule isn't very difficult if you're just going by records. But Tennessee only two games back. In this league, nine and three, it's a lot better than where I thought they would be. <laughs> you go back to how they started. Seven straight wins will, will improve your record quite a bit. Uh, but you look at that, two games back, You've got Kentucky. You've got a head-to-head -head with Auburn. You've got two head-to-heads with Arkansas. You can make a case that it's right there in their hands where they want to be. Now, whether or not you're going to put money on them doing it is a different thing. But, Mark, Isaiah, your thoughts on Kentucky on Tuesday, on where this team is. I'll let you take it where you want. And I will throw in there that Ty Ty Washington got hurt yesterday for Kentucky. Mm -hmm. John Calipari said after the game that it appears he's going to be day-to-day. -day. You know, Again, this time last week, Rick Barnes was saying the same thing about Kamwa. We'll see what the deal is with Washington. But Tuesday night, Kentucky comes to town. You're a Kentucky native. We'll start with you. Your thoughts on the Wildcats coming in here and what they gave Tennessee and Lexington. How does that play into this, this game Tuesday? Oh, I think it's huge. Uh, if, if I'm on this team, uh, even just being a fan like I am now, it, it was a, just a disgraceful performance that we had there uh, as far as how the game ended up. Uh, they did have a coach that died, a lot of emotion in the building. They made a beat a, a bad NBA team that night. So, uh, but they or won't be in. Uh, right. <laughs> well, <you're hitting> it. <laughs> yeah, but they won't be in uh, Rupp Arena on Tuesday night. It's, they're going to be in Rocky Top. It's going to be a totally different thing. And I wouldn't have been able to sleep very good without thinking about uh, playing UK again if I'm one of those guys. So I, I like us to win that one. Mark, uh, Kentucky at Arkansas. I'm trying to pitch this that you've got a chance at the title. Is that complete fool's goal? Uh, not complete. I mean, I think there's there's never say never attitude. But um, you know, my hope in this Kentucky game is that you, you, the, the players don't look at it as like, man, they just made shots, right? Like they were they they could have beat anybody in the world that night, and they look at it from the standpoint of what they, could they have done better. We got to guard. We got to keep their their points out of out of the paint. We got to uh, keep them in a half court offense, and we got to rebound. Tashibo had. Great rebounder, uh, really good inside presence, but we got to rebound. And the environment, yes, um, but in that environment, we also got two freshman point guards. And so we got to execute. Josiah, Jordan, James, Fulkerson, your, your um, experienced guys, both against Kentucky or on the road at Arkansas, they got to show up in order for Tennessee to have a chance to win both of these basketball games. It can't be the Kennedy Chandlers and the Zigglers of the world that, that are the leaders uh, in these games. And, and Santiago is the other one that's got to step up in order for these uh, Tennessee to get these two wins. All right, Jimmy and Chuck, let's take a look at the uh, two leading bracketology guys. Um, that is Jerry Palm and Joe Lenardi, who actually came up with that bracketology term. We've got their... There we go. Uh, we've got their latest projections as of yesterday. Both of them have Tennessee in the south region in San Antonio. Uh, Lunardi has Tennessee as a four seed against 13 seed Wagner. Jerry Palm has Tennessee as the five seed against 12 seed North Texas. Tennessee against Michigan State in that second round if you're Lunardi. Houston in the second round if you're Jerry Palm. The number one seed in that region, both guys say that's going to be Arizona, who you've already beaten, Wisconsin Baylor. Uh, Jimmy, uh, Lenardi was in town this week. You talked to him. Yeah. Your thoughts on what he's saying there, and did he tell you anything of interest uh, this week that stood out to you? He said that he thought Tennessee was regular good, not special. He said that team a few years ago was special, meaning Final Four caliber, Elite Eight. 
He said this team is regularly good. He defined that as you can win one or two games in the NCAA tournament, you're not going any further. He doesn't. He doesn't think they have a lot of NBA talent. The only one on the team he thinks is NBA talent is Kennedy Chandler. So he thinks this team has a ceiling. He thinks they have limitations, and he doesn't see them winning more than one or, or two games. And he doesn't see them winning more than a game or two in the NCAA tournament. Chuck, they are number 10 in net rankings in the NCAA. They're already up to 10. That was before yesterday's victory. Um, if the season ended right now, that would factor to make you a three seed. If you just do the, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. uh, but four or five seed is what these guys are projecting, mainly because when you look at those quad one numbers. Exactly. I mean, you're four and wins. six. Yeah. You've played a lot, but you don't have a winning record. Your thoughts on would that be a fair draw, four or five seed at this point for a Tennessee team? Well, I tell you what, I watched Houston the other night, and I don't think I want to be uh, in the same kind of bracket with them. But, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking it looks like to me four or five, probably a, a top five to me, unless you can knock off a Kentucky, unless you can beat an Auburn. And I did think it was interesting, Rick Barnes, on the Kentucky game, 9 o'clock tip. He said get there early, something special is going to happen. Wonder what that is. <laughs> I have an idea what that's going to be. Do you? Yeah. I'll just say this: if you enjoyed the, uh, if you enjoyed the festivities at Neyland Stadium, the special uh, event, light show type yeah. stuff, I think you'll like what you're going to see. Okay. That's just a guess. Just a guess. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like an educated. <laughs> just a guess. I think I think you're going to have something cool there for the Kentucky game. Well, good. And I, th I think there's a really cool company in town that can do this really cool thing. Ah. Yeah. Wouldn't be a bandit. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things, too, about Tennessee, they have played really well last, what, five or so years against Kentucky at Thompson Bowling Arena. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those have been among the best games they have played all year. I expect them to play really well against Kentucky. And Rick Barnes, whereas Bruce Pearl has caught up and passed him head-to-head, -head, Barnes started well with him, but that, Bar yeah. Pearl has owned that uh, lately. Mm -hmm. Barnes has done very well against John Calipari. Yeah. So, uh, it's going to be an interesting one Tuesday night. I know you're going to want some bragging rights whenever you go back to Lexington. So they need to win this one for Isaiah. Well, I just don't want to have to hear from the UK fans. Yeah, yeah, keep your glasses. tickets, Paul fans. <laughs> keep your tickets. Don't, don't let them go. Right, very good. Uh, Mark, Isaiah, thank you very much. Appreciate you for being here. When we come back, is there going to be a spring game? Uh, we'll talk to Jimmy, Chuck, and a couple other football analysts out here next. we got plenty more to come on the Sports Source as we switch gears to football. Come on back.